<gasps> What's going on? This is Raw Star of the Bird Main Misfits, and you're listening to the Misfit Effect. And as always, I'm joined with my wonderful co host, CW. I'm here again. And yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we've been gone for a month. I had surgery and a lot of stuff was going on. But we're back with a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guest who's been nominated for many, many awards. She's won a few and she's doing great things. She's a film star. She's a director and the chief brand officer and, and a production manager for uh, Alt Exotic. Um, she's really into BDSM and a lot of crazy stuff. She has a you know, you know, a double bachelor's degree in psychology and political science. I mean, and um, you know, she overcame a really um, uh, something something that happened to her, like a stroke. Let her tell her story, man. Yeah, I'm I'm just excited about me hey, Montana. You gonna be you gonna, you like a trailer? You like a trailer now? It's gonna be like oh, we know a whole movie. Yeah, this this this, this is a, the Misha Montana trailer. You gotta stay tuned for the uh for the uh for the all the all the stories. But anyway, Misha Montana, how you doing, miss? I'm good, babe. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. You know, just starting off this great Sunday, you know, looking forward to what all it has to bring. So for our listeners out there who you know didn't get enough of what I said in my introduction of you, please tell us who you are. The introduction was fabulous, by the way. So, like, I'm fully supportive of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> my name is Amisha Montana, and I am now an officially an award winning, yay, um, adult film star and director, production manager, and chief brand officer at Alterotic. And I am a stroke survivor. I had my stroke. That was what we were talking about with the movie. I am. Um, I suffered a major stroke a year ago, um, last April, and used that opportunity to make a really powerful human piece documentary style showcase, um, and that's called The Exploitation of Mission Montana. And it's been just critically acclaimed and well-renowned across the board. It's so honoring to be nominated for every single major um, award show in a best feature capacity so it's really like it's so crazy to me it's so surreal the whole thing is surreal but then you know to have these wonderful blessings in the form of nominations and wins it's just crazy so um I'm very thankful for that and to turn that into something positive is just the most wonderful gift that I can give back from that experience so I love it I love being able to reach out to other survivors and you know try to raise awareness for um education about strokes and um all these different things that we're trying to do to to get more awareness about strokes out there because when I had a stroke I had no idea I was having a stroke because I was 32 years old and had no idea like what a stroke was with it. I mean, why would I have a stroke? So ultimately I had a stroke because of a blood clot that I got from the COVID-19 vaccine. But it's just, it's kind of a wild, wild experience. And one in four people will have a stroke at some point in their life. So it's definitely something that I care about a lot. And in doing so, I wanted to show a human side of the adult industry that a lot of people don't get the chance to see. And it really changed the game I think like I've never seen anything like it you know Ivan never has seen anything like it and he's been doing it for 20 years so when you when you think that you've seen it all like this is definitely a piece that that's very unique to um anything that I've ever seen and it's a beautiful beautiful movie so if anyone hasn't seen it yet definitely check that out I haven't seen it yet but now I'm like I'm interested in watching and now it. I'm gonna check it out yeah, yeah. Like- <laughs> It's Does, really interesting. The trailer is really crazy too that he did. Like, it makes you like you're like, what this is your life? It's so crazy. And I put a lot of stuff in it that was like a lot of things from my personal life too. So, um, that was great. Like, it was really, really great. So, yeah, exploitation. It's amazing. No, because I I feel that like one, it is important to get out there and. 
the way they made it seem that like it was put together in a way that you know people can learn more about you know with strokes and stuff like that because i know certain people who have had one but they had it in the later part of their lives and right. yeah and when and then you're having it like in your 30s and it's just like ugh. and then you got it from you know a blood clot when you're you know trying to make sure you stay healthy and right then you ended up you know hurting you in other ways so it, it's really like it's incredibly surreal to imagine that too like having you know one day you're fine and then the next day you just uh, it comes up out of nowhere a lot of the time and you just really have to be so careful and so thankful for the health that you have because you just never know you know and i didn't know what stroke symptoms were um so that's something to be aware of that people should be aware of what to look for and like if other people are having a stroke because a lot of times when people have strokes that people think they're like they're drunk or um like being weird or on drugs because they can't speak for the mm-hmm. moment like, at all you know and i'm sure people were just like oh this there's just this other like this porn girl who's drunk and high and stuttering all over the place yeah, they, just, they, uh, they, they just assume like many many different things that you know you may or may not do in general like oh this person is on this and they're acting like that because they're on this and or something else or you just try to make a representation of you that is not accurate saying oh this person i've seen this person drink at this event before they must be plastered right now and right and it's you know it's kind of funny with me too because like I drink I drink obviously and um when I drink I have stroke symptoms kind of come back on a little bit which is interesting so like one or two drinks for me will sound like 10 because I slur um it's hard enough to like for me to talk and try to think about my words like sober because it's really difficult for me to talk the way I used to talk like it's very hard to try to maintain that and then when I drink like it's just totally out of the question like it's so weird it just comes back on completely and I lose my um control of my speech quite a bit so but it's annoying because then I have like two drinks and people are like wow Misha's hammered and I'm not until I actually end up getting hammered probably but you know <laughs> the most part, i feel like my brain is like it's annoying because i can hear myself being like yes i sound so drunk right now and then it's like i'm really not though I <laughs> oh, but yeah so it's interesting having some of those like residual effects of this too but we're going to one day at a time you know everything is a blessing and a learning experience so like I know, uh, from what I've heard, it's like almost a, it's really hard for uh, most people to, f- like, depending on how uh, bad it was, to fully uh, come back from having one. Yeah. And like, uh, I'm glad you did because, it, like, you seem like, uh, like, because I I don't I don't know if I met you before or after you had because I met you at X I'm sorry Urban X last year, so I think I met you originally at the boat party. That was, that's right. And that was, um, that was a couple months after. Okay. So yeah, like, I'm, so since I, I can't really say the difference between the two since I didn't know you prior, but, right. but, but every time I seen you, you always seem like, you know, like that, you know, you always have that positive energy and I love that. So. <laughs> and thank you. I, I, I'm glad to hear that. That makes me happy because I, I love you know looking at life in a positive outlook no matter what like tragedy doesn't have to make you bitter or resentful or Or define you yeah it's like it doesn't define you it shouldn't define you at all but if it does you know then at least make something out of it that can be positive and to that can help other people and you know, every day is a blessing, truly. And when you go through life events like that, you you see just like how magnified it is and like how much more important it is to to be thankful for your blessings. So yeah, that reminds me 
be blessed. So I'm happy and healthy and as difficult as it may be. And I have a lot of shortcomings with it because I have residual side effects like the aphasia, which is permanent memory loss is really bad. But, and depression and anxiety and some other like invisible symptoms. But I'm very lucky. Like my physical face recovered for the most part, which is a blessing. I mean, my whole face was completely drooped out and that came back pretty quickly. And I was pleasantly surprised by that. So I made like a 90% recovery, I would say. But, I know a lot of people who have had it, like they get like, could you say depression? A lot of them get really depressed about depressed, depressed about um, the face dropping. And they just like, that bothers them the most and it destroys some of them the most from the right. ones that I've spoken to because they really hate you know, it's the, first, it's the first thing you see when you see a person before you look at anything else is, you know, their face. And um, I know a lot of people are, a lot of them, people who, who have had it, like, are depressed because of, you know, so, and it, it sucks, yeah. but, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's really hard to, like, to deal with that. And then it's hard when you have, then, like, a chemical imbalance and a brain injury. So, you know the physical component is you know driving those thoughts too where it's like I can't even control that at some point because it you know it kicks into gear and takes over um so that's why I think it's so important to try to look at everything with uh the positive perspective because there are those things that are going to be challenging or difficult or, you know, upsetting to you. And it's easy to fall into a hole and be depressed, but it's also one of those things like you choose how you want to view the world or how you feel about things. That is a choice. Ultimately, sometimes it's harder to choose that, but it's definitely, I love looking at life the way that I do, and I hope it's inspiring to people. And I've heard that it it is. So I'm I'm very, very happy when I get messages like that, for sure. And I agree with you completely. Um, I know um, for myself, I had a a neck surgery in uh, 2016, and I flatlined during it. And I basically had lost all use on my right side. And I had to relearn how to basically use it. And CW is uh, one of my fitness trainers and he has helped me a little bit, like, you know, build some little bit of a, what I've lost a little bit. And it's still like, you know, always to everybody, like, you know, things happen in, in life, you know, you can't control, but what you can control is your action and your mentality after because it's really going to be is going really going to be what defines you as far as your mental your mentality and um, everything else that's inside of you going forward. Because you know thing, things are forever going to be changed because this happened. You know. Yes, it's it's so crazy, and that's what, like a lot of people can't relate to that though either, and I think that's where a part like part of the problem is is that a majority of the population probably knows someone who has had a stroke or has had one themselves or had other illnesses but they just if you haven't gone through it yourself like you can't relate and that's why I love talking to stroke survivors so much because like you're in like this little community where you know um what someone else is going through in a way that other people fortunately for them you know can't relate to but it's hard when people especially you know with my my situation a lot of times people are just like wow you know it's really great that you recovered so well you know and I did and I'm very very thankful for that and I love hearing it but I, I don't think people understand just like how much damage is done underneath the surface you know so that creates a difficulty for me because people kind of forget about it too and then when I have those deficits like forgetting things or not being able you know to work it's because of of the stroke symptoms that I have so um and it's hard it's definitely hard too especially with me I'm trying to 
be very professional and I always try to operate with a level of professionalism for the most part and to be like late to things or like forget things um it's just hard to manage a business and raise a child with special needs. And um, I actually run like what, five or 10 friggin' businesses at the same time all day, every day. <laughs> it's like I have 20 jobs. Um, so it's just a lot. It's hard to do that. And then it's hard to recover from something like that and then give yourself the time and the space to recover. And I never really gave myself enough time to recover too. And I think that's part of the issues that I've been having lately is if you don't allow yourself time, then it's going to be detrimental at some point. And I jumped right back in. I was planning my comeback scene for my hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I gotta, we got to get back to work. Um, well, that's just, you just, you just have a uh, ongoing mentality. Like, I don't know what they call it, but like uh, you would you know, prefer to work and then, then concentrate on what elements that are dis that are disabling you at the moment. One hundred percent. I I use work too in a sense where it's like healing for me as well as a distraction. Um, when I can pour myself into the creative side, then it's helping me heal inside and out while channeling that energy to create something that's hopefully inspiring for the you know or strange or challenges, you know, your, your thoughts and beliefs. And it's such a cool thing to be able to have that kind of control over my content. And with Alterotic, you know, working with them, obviously I have a lot of control because I direct and um, I'm the only female director and writer and member of the team. So it adds a unique perspective, I'd like to think too, so. I'm happy, so happy with my job titles and the work that I produce. So I'm definitely blessed for sure. I agree. And that's why I always say that, like, I use work to distract me from everything else in the world. Because, like, once, I, once I, I get my thoughts idle, it's when, like, everything negative comes into my brain. And it's like, it's not a good moment. No. No, that's not, it's not good. Like, and that's using things like work or, you know, that's why people have hobbies and interests that they like. And you need that. You need something that like readjusts the focus and the perspective. Um, you need something to focus on that's positive and that's motivating and inspiring and is like a creative outlet because outlet, not outlet. I mean, creative outlet. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, there's stroke brain kicking in every once in a while. <laughs> a little Freudian oh, sweat. Okay. Question. So, question. So, what have, what do you think you've learned the most from others? Because you say you love to speak to other people who have had stroke strokes. What do you think you've learned the most um, from people you've spoken to? Um, you know. I've learned a lot about how, just how difficult it is for people. And it breaks my heart. Um, I'm definitely an empathetic person. So when I get these, some of these messages and I just, you know, and they'll be long ones. Like I had, you know, someone messaging me that they have a hard time getting up out of bed in the morning because they just don't they're so depressed. They don't want to, they can't, they have a severe um, droop of the face. Like you were talking about too, where people, you know, they stare at them or they're nasty and make the, the social media nastiness. Um, I don't know what happened to, to all of these angry people on the internet. Um, it's, just, it's just people out here who have nothing else better to do than to insult somebody. And right. most of the time it's just that they're lacking something in their life and it builds them up to try to ridicule, ridicule somebody in order to make themselves feel better. And I find those people to be very annoying and it's it just, it really, it bothers me. So, yeah. Yeah, 
how can it not to some extent, right? I I'm immune to it at this point because it's like you can only see so many things where it's like, okay, I've heard it all at this point. Sometimes though I get somewhere I'm like, wow, that is horrifying. Um And they hide behind a computer, so you don't know who's saying it. Cause like unless you right? know them personally. And it's like you this, this person's out here just Yeah. It's like horrible yeah they're um, miserable so they want to make someone else miserable it's crazy i've never understood that like i really don't don't understand but you know i feel sorry for those people and i hope that they have some peace and happiness in their life at some point that would allow them to not treat other people that way especially for no reason you know um but the with the bad comes the good right and that's where i love being able to talk to to survivors because you really learn just how you know blessed you actually are um and it gives you this moment of clarity to sit back and say like you know what like no matter what I'm going through, someone else is going through something worse potentially in their life and they still get up in the morning and they're not going to treat people around them in a negative way. They're going to be positive for, for themselves and for others and turn these things into, you know, opportunities to, to do better um, and to spread awareness and to, even in their personal life, just to be a better person and be thankful and for what you have and it has that perspective but um my brain's struggling so hard today i'm telling you babe. sorry sorry guys no okay. it is okay we understand sorry. completely <laughs> uh this is uh, such a bad idea for me to be like yeah sunday perfect because my brain right. um no it's it's a wonderful wonderful opportunity to talk to to survivors and some of these people have these saddest stories but i get messages where it's like i can't get out of bed but i did and i am inspired by you being honest with your experiences and as much as like to me i don't think that that really impacts people you know like i don't consider myself i mean i'm not arrogant obviously so i'm like you know oh really people like hear my story and they're actually like, by it i think that's cool like it, it's so wonderful to get messages like that and i'm always like overwhelmed when i see them because i'm like this is so cool that people feel that way and oh, i I feel, I feel that um because I, I have a condition called uh called neural and mm -hmm. i know people who have it way way really really bad uh worse to me and um the people who I've spoken to that are like it's it's just like just speaking about it or speaking to somebody who is in the in like is known as a known person uh who has it it just bring like bright brings you up more because you know you're not alone right. and um just having that little that little interaction can um bring you up while you're talking to the other person who is who, who's who got, who's going through the same thing and if it's worse than you whatever or they're doing better than you it just gives you that inspiration um to to want to to want to do to want to right. be you know and like so you just taking your time out to just speak to many of these people who have had uh strokes in the past like um some people might like who've not experienced or not going through the same thing you're going through may not see how much how much it benefits them and like like in a, in, a, in a huge capacity just because it's just that you're going through it you're and you're still persevering and doing this and doing that like I may not be I may not want to do the same um job as you but you can motivate me to you know get up get out of bed that day and not give up so i love that so much though i mean that's like you know we have to love and support each other especially in you know our community that we have disabilities and people don't understand that and like to as much as i would i don't like the fact that we have that common bond but like 
it's such a beautiful thing to have that with someone like you know I I understand you I see you I hear you you know I relate to you and I truly mean that you know oh the xeno cat is here by the way there she is we adopted this cat the the she's, cat <laughs> she's so ridiculous I named her after my pussy so you know there's that <laughs> alien pussy but um side note if you see oh yeah that's right this is just um audio so yeah. never mind no one knew that she was here you could have just well, i didn't see i didn't see i couldn't even see the cat oh really no. yes no yeah <laughs> she's so creepy she's the weirdest cat <laughs> ever experienced and cats are weird but this one was like times a hundred i can't even believe it but yeah we, uh, many people we interviewed like their cat just jumped in front of the camera like oh, who are you talking to? like who are you talking to yeah. <laughs> pet me right now forget them <laughs> she definitely was she's like uh why are you on the phone come play with me but um no back to the to the subjects we're discussing i i really find so much joy and happiness from being able to talk to to people and hearing that you know what we are making a difference we're trying to make a difference in the world and it matters what we do um, and how we do things. People are paying attention and they're listening. And that's why, you know, everybody, all the time I get people that are like, well, I don't know what, you know, you're expecting to do because no one's ever going to care about um, people on porn or in sex work or in the adult community. And I absolutely refuse to believe that that's the case. Like, and I may not be able to do anything, but I really think that even thus far, I think made an impact on at least some people's lives to put the story out there and to provide that kind of um, look into my life is a sacrifice on my end, you know, for privacy and comfortability. Uh, but I do so in the hope that it will do something good for not just myself, but for you know everyone in our industry and then people anybody that feels ostracized by society or you know put down because of their appearance or their job or you know whatever it may be and i really think there is going to be a shift at some point and i firmly believe that and when we'll revisit this in like a year or two and see what happens so, <laughs> so i know i read as i said earlier uh like you're a huge advocate of humanizing people in the industry and the thing is it's like when you just said that people will say you're a porn star or porn performer uh what are you going to do and it's just the fact that like most people try to dismiss you because you are a performer mm -hmm. and it's like yeah you are a perfect you are a performer director by trade but that doesn't define who you are as a human being because at no. the end of the day we're still human being we're we all, you know, we all we all came out of somebody and now we're here, you know. <laughs> we all have the same entrance and we all have the same exit. Yeah, so right. everybody too, like, you know, you're we're all products of sex, right? We're yeah. all sex beings, we're all sexual creatures, like and this repression of your sexuality or sexual energy, um, the tabooness and everything that like people look at negatively, negatively those people are the worst too the most repressed people are the ones that end up hurting people children um cheating on their spouses you know doing really um outlandish you know fetishes and stuff like those because they're so repressed they don't have a healthy relationship with sex and if we were more open about it and have like the conversation, like obviously I don't think that, you know, depending on the ages, like uh, you know, kids should not be aware of it necessarily, but it's, there's education is critically important. If you don't have access to education, like, and even with the kids, like they're going to have sex at some point, um, you can't stop them, you know? Yeah. But, so it's like, why make it like, we, why can't we just accept and normalize that? Like, we're sexual creatures and it's not a bad thing. Yeah. So that's 
we're working on it. Um, it's definitely a difficult task for sure because there's just a large percentage of the population that's perfectly comfortable with consuming porn. But when it comes to the rights of, you know, people in the industry or in sex work period, there's absolutely no chance, which is wrong. Well, the thing is, it's like those people who are, they who speak negatively about performers or people that are in the industry, some of, like some of them are the main watchers. They just don't do it publicly. And it's Most like and conservatives too, the ones that that are the harshest critics of the adult industry, they're the ones that end up getting like caught with transgender hookers. You know? <laughs> I know some too. I, I actually like legitimately. I can't say it because I'll probably get like <laughs> murdered. I literally have seen it with my own eyes, and you would be shocked at who is involved in like um, gay and, and trans like situations that are high profile Republican politicians. Just gonna throw that. I've out there. I've had a conversation. Very- I had a conversation Very, with certain people. Like, What'd you say, CW? I said probably with large anti-gay followings in uh, politics. Oh, exactly. Yeah. What, no, I'm talking like they're the ones out there being like family values and like, you know, we hate trans people. And uh, th- yeah, those guys, them. It's like, seriously? Uh, but that's repression. That's what repression does. Like if you, you know, you... F- the louder that they are about it, it's usually a sign. You know, and the thing, and the thing, and the thing is, is like I had a conversation um, a few weeks ago with some people, and we were just talking about random, not saying names, random people, and it's just like it's just eye opening, like who is out here doing what with who and how, you know? Right. Like, it's, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's just you're so adamantly against it in public. But then as soon as you go behind closed doors, it's like, it's, 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 not, it's not wrong with someone being, being in the closet for, uh, as they say, uh, whatever. But when you're speaking out against it, it's just, you know, just, yeah, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. It's I mean, just, it's weird. It's weird. That's what you you're looking at. It's weird, because why would you do that? But it's yeah. like, I'm trying to hide in plain sight, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the typical, though, is, like, as odd as it is, like, psychologically, it, it's just a pattern. Um, I don't know, you know, what that about exactly with some of these people, but it's like, God, you just, like, I don't know. Some of these people are just, and look at how many people that hurts, too, um, when you are so hateful and angry and seek to destroy people that literally are just trying to exist and they're entitled you don't have to agree with any anything someone does like if that's not your cup of tea like for example they're not really my cup of tea but do i think that they don't have the right to exist or have opinions or have an opinion that differs from mine no would i ever you know and i don't understand i think we've gotten to a point too where it's gotten so out of hand with the vision of everything. And everyone's like, you have your strong like moral foundation, right? And mm-hmm. everybody rooted in their own morale, like, or morality. And it, so you get it when people like try to question your beliefs, it's upsetting. But if you can take emotion out of things and just try to uh, at least exist peacefully, like this, this country in particular is like, what is happening right now? Um, everybody's just so angry. And then like with COVID, they're all kinds of worked up and it's just, it's a crazy time. It's absolutely a crazy time. But there's some serious anti-sex work legislation coming up in the fall. And you have these conservatives running on platforms that is an anti-porn, anti-sex work platform. And you know what? They're going to probably win. And that's very scary and very dangerous for us. I mean, like, it's like, it's like the politicians are always anti-porn, 
anti anti women mm-hmm. and then anti anti uh the right to express your own sexual your your own sexuality right so and they they love it and because well, they they run on this it's uh, oh, it's bullshit it's a facade it's like um you know we're the party of family values <laughs> and uh it, that's why they go after you know oh those horrible whores in the porn industry and sex workers and the deviants and the you know the trend the trannies quote unquote, you know that got it just they love running on stuff like that because it appeals to people like and it's not true at all like what they're doing is hurting that cause even more for themselves mm-hmm. like if you want your children to have a healthy relationship with sex then criminalizing sex work and getting rid of all the porn like you're just gonna erase the porn from the world um is very dangerous because you then open up illegal channels like of sex work that's dangerous for the people involved and it becomes more prolific at that point like it's going to be everywhere um people will have sex they will obtain materials to view it so i don't understand why there can't just be like a normal healthy conversation about it all the way across the board and again once again the harshest opponents are the ones that are often the main ones yeah you know why is it then if if nobody's watching porn you know what i mean how do these views get a billion view, you know, a billion views yeah. on it. Yeah, I can't imagine because it's not everybody who's saying that they don't agree with like us having rights are the mm-hmm. ones watching it. Yeah, crazy, absolutely crazy. And then if you're opening about what, if you're open about watching, get people say certain things about you, and then if you, and then there's people out there who make fun or insult the people who actually admit that they pay for their own content, pay, pay, pay for the content that they consume and then they say, well, you can get it for free here. And it's like people don't understand that, you know, they're supporting their people because every time you go to some sites, you're getting it illegally. So... Right. right. It's stolen. Stolen content. It, like, mm-hmm. it's the most annoying thing, too, and it happens, I don't know, at least ten times a day where people are like, babe, why aren't your videos on Pornhub for free or Xvids for free? And I'm like, you mean that my the content that I create, that I pay for, location, wardrobe, other people, production, cameras, lighting, uh, the time to edit, editors, uh, my outfits, my makeup, you know, my time, none of, I should sacrifice all of that so that you can get a, you know. a video free. Like, but they like these guys are into mostly guys. I say guys because it's the majority. I actually, it's, I've never got an email ever, not one, to be like, "Hey, like, we're, can I get this for free?" Because uh, <laughs> they're like entitled to it now. Like the internet is a was a wonderful, wonderful idea, right? And now <laughs> you just created this entitlement. You know, you have mm-hmm. all, you have unlimited access. You have way too much access to to everything where you know it has to be it's like i need it faster and cheaper and like now everything is free because it's ripped off yeah so um, most of the and then and then off. once and then once that one video get out there on blah blah site it ends up on like 11 different ones and it's like yeah all over the place like and it's like well there you go um and it's difficult to be in the adult industry these days. It's not the same as it used to be. Um, because there's a lot of oversaturation in the market too, because you're competing now with people that got a wild hair in COVID deciding that they want to do porn, but don't consider it porn for some reason, because OnlyFans is so mainstream. Um, there's literally people on OnlyFans that are like, oh, porn people, gross. Like, what the fuck? That's true. That's true. It's like some like all of a sudden OnlyFans girls are like so pretentious. Um, 
I, I don't know. It's just the weirdest thing ever. Like, you yeah, think someone, someone, on someone who feels that way has just told me why they feel that way. I found that reason to be very, very dumb. However, Wait, tell us. They said that, well, the difference between us and a porn performer is that uh, many of us are only doing it with ourselves and or uh, we are uh, only doing it with, with one partner. We're not doing it with many different um, partners like that. But I'm uh, like, what? I'm like, yeah, this is, this is what they said to me. Uh, but, I'm like, but I'm like, at the end of the day, these wow, people- Wow, like, the people, mental, mental demand. And I'm, like, and I'm like, people in the industry, depending on who they're shooting with um, or what company they're shooting with, they get tested at least every 14 days. Um, you know, to make sure, you know, nothing, you know that's, all the time. Yeah, and it's like, you don't get me, don't get me wrong, there, 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 are, there are, there is an influx of females in the industry, but there's only so many dudes. <laughs> and it's there's like, a shortage of guys right now, too. So all, everybody, every male performer is like working like overtime right now. Um, but that's crazy to me. Like, I honestly, I'm not surprised at all because, like, what there's like this weird hierarchy of like sex work where some uh, people think that they're better than the other person you know like it's like oh you're a stripper well i do porn that's somehow better you know what i mean or like i do only fans and you guys are just doing everybody on camera it's like we're all in the same category and it's so damaging to the cause and to everyone in this industry if they could just stop being so negative towards each other and like competitive or whatever it is that people mm-hmm. are doing. Also, I also heard that people say that like you put your body, your um, your uh, feminine organs through many different things, whatever, and they feel that, you know, it goes through a lot more, but I'm like, not necessarily because if you have sex with your partner or you're with- um, Every day, how is Every that- day, it's the same, the same thing. How is that People act like every day. It's not. Yeah, so I'm saying it's the same thing, and people don't understand that. They just see that. Well, well you and- might you might have someone who's who's a, a a tree a tree stem, or you might be someone with a with a full full size tree, and it's like when well, you're bouncing back between those two, whatever, and everything that you have is you know eviscerated. And I'm like, because yeah, like uh, you know people out here fucking every day for free. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like, and you know what? It's such a weird, it's like <laughs> cockroaches have sex, right? Like, we're, yeah. I, I mean, anybody has this attitude, like, oh, yeah, I just like have sex with one person. Congratulations. You're, you're in the majority, probably. But it's like uh, everybody has sex. Everybody has sex. Animals have sex. We all have sex. It's like, I don't understand this like glorification of, of, you know, being in the adult industry where people just think that they are like the coolest people in the entire world because they fuck on camera. Like, at the end of the day, we're all glorified whores. But there, mm-hmm. it makes it different if there's a camera in front. You know, that's like I said too with like industry people that talk shit about people that escort. Um, it's unbelievable to me. Like, I, how can you be like but, that? We're already a group of people that's looked upon you know poorly by society and yet instead of trying to empower each other you tear somebody down for because you think that you're on a pedestal and it's just it's crazy and that attitude is destructive to our industry as a whole and to the people in this industry because it gives them the other side that seeks to destroy us way more power and leverage when we're all we're fractured in our own community mm-hmm. so it's crazy to me that, that this happens and i wish you know i hope people would would really pay attention to that and be more mindful of what they say and what they do because it makes a, a difference you're absolutely right Major, what I said earlier, how long have you been in the industry i've only been in in an industry for like three years, but okay. then COVID screwed up everything. Yeah, COVID, COVID, COVID came out of nowhere in 
force a lot of people to do OnlyFans and or I wouldn't say force. A lot of people no. started do using OnlyFans or stuff like that because COVID. Yeah, yeah they we're... blame COVID. Was like, oh, sex work now is mainstream. <laughs> or they just said, I can't leave the house, but I can't masturbate on camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. And everybody was bored. So, guess the porn consumption went up dramatically too in that period of time. So, it's like there's at least, at the very least, some kind of fascination with it. Right. So, it's. Mm-hmm. it's to me but that's why too you know with like the documentary that i'm doing is i want it to be the positive side the human Mm -hmm. side real side not everything's positive obviously but um it's what you do with it i want to show people a real authentic raw side of the adult industry and not the dark side you know, everything you hear, and that's why people have this stigma is reinforced because you get these documentarians that are just self righteous and looking for shock factor, and they exploit us by picking the most tragic, dark stories and pumping that into the mainstream uh, public. And people are so fascinated by porn. They're so fascinated by it. People want to hear like about my day-to-day life all the time because it's interesting, like, because it appeals to them. But you know, when you put out nothing but negative, dark things about porn, like obviously those things exist, but they don't have to be glorified. It's like uh, it's like I, I read. I was reading about you earlier about uh, your upbringing and stuff like that, and people will like find like they can interview 10 people and nine people will say what you said but then that one other person who had a you know a bad upbringing whatever or bad you know life whatever they will only focus on that person's story and it's ridiculous that's what's so crazy to me too that they do that like the fact that they're focusing on the negative parts so heavily or like you know all the time i get people that are like oh wow like you didn't grow up in a fucked up family and um they're like surprised by that and I'm like that's such a horrible stigma like against the industry like there are a lot of people in this beautiful wonderful people in this industry like obviously it does attract a certain type of personality a lot of the times but it's just not true to what people think it is and that's why all the stuff that's out there is really damaging and that's the stuff that you know, the, the suburban mom is going to be like, oh my God, this is horrifying, you know, mm-hmm. and a negative perspective. So then when you get people that come out with legislation that are like, this is a horrible industry, they're looking at that as a reference. Um, so I'd love to pump into society a different perspective, a real perspective, a real raw human perspective. We're all human beings at the end of the day. And this job shouldn't be definitive of my character. Mm-hmm. It, should, you know, it shouldn't categorize me or classify me as a bad person. You know, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a human at the end of the day, just like everyone else. And this is a job. It's no different than going to work and coming home at the end of the day. Like it doesn't make, and people like do not know how to handle us like they just like think that we're just like literally like in our houses all day like fucking non-stop having and, sex and and they think you just have sex with anybody yeah oh everyone just, you know, and honestly like i've only had sex with one person outside of um the industry for mm-hmm. the last two years so it's like at one person that was not in the industry, which is wild. One person, one, mm-hmm. and it's wild to me because it, people just think like it, because I have sex with tested <laughs> professionals <laughs> regularly that they're like, "Ow, oh, why won't?" And they get so mad about it. They're like, "Yeah, fuck you, bitch! I can't believe you won't fuck me, you whore." I'm like, "Well." No, are you are you really a whore if you want to have sex with him <laughs> or them? Yeah, because <laughs> I don't want to have sex with you. Like, 
And that should tell you something right there. If I don't want to have sex with you, then that must be extra. <laughs> because uh, apparently I'll have sex with everyone. So it's like, people get so offended. Like, oh, you won't fuck me seriously. It's like, I don't know what you're all hot and bothered about, bro. I got, you know, got yourself real worked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know like, need to consent to it, you know? Mm-hmm. But that's, again, like the danger of some of this stuff is like, you know, where's consent? Um it issues arise when you don't have open conversations about sex. Um, that's why it, there is like so much uh, sexual assault and misunderstandings of, you know, what consent is and the definition of consent. And yeah, I know the event I went to last night. Um, one of the we, huh? No, we, I wasn't. I wasn't at the art awards. Whatever. I went to a. Uh, BDSM event in uh, North Hollywood last night, and and like uh, one of the biggest first questions is like, uh, "What is your view on consent?" is one of the questions, and I feel that you know that is one of the most important things to have in general because like even if like uh, you know the person is okay with blah blah you should still ask them before you do blah blah yeah what's kind of interesting i went i had a class Uh, i was working um at the time i wanted to do forensic psychology so i was taking a class that was um legal psychology and my professor was actually the jury consultant for the harvey weinstein case Oh, wow. which is crazy wow it was happening too um so we got to really like dive into a lot of that stuff because like it's interesting when again emotion dictates so much of our choices and our perspectives are based upon emotion and in law you know people don't understand a lot of time like how could these horrible human beings like not be found guilty on things or you know and it's because you have to look at definitional you know rape and Mm -hmm. by law by state there are certain things and if that's the thing if you don't like the law then vote accordingly you know people just don't understand how they think their votes don't like matter at all like it does matter who you put into a that dictates your life, your everyday life, you know, um, in ways that you might not be aware of all the time, but it's it exists that way. It bothers me that some judges, they have that mentality of, like, if this criminal, we'll call them criminals, um, assault somebody, um, they say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up their life um, because they're a good kid and just give them three months or three months community service or something like that oh, and for raping with somebody and like and they say they well they don't, we don't want to make a mess up their lives but they messed up this other person's life yeah. for the rest of their life whatever and yeah. then like and then like i don't like you know i've said my my view on abortion before but if someone was assaulted and they ended up getting pregnant whatever like in certain states now it's almost illegal it's legal for them to abort it because you know like well, for whatever reason and then and then like in some states they'll give the person a uh, uh, parental rights <laughs> it's like it's uh, what's happening right now that's why i'm it's so critically important that like look at what's happening now so not only do you have um very harsh anti-sex laws potentially coming into play here in the next few months this is it's very very real too like and people are just so ignorant that they think like no nah, they're never going to do that oh they will they're doing yeah. it now and they and they will win yeah. people are ignorant to the fact like okay it's great like no one really likes biden okay like for the most part i haven't heard somebody be like just love him he's great i mean but his politics if those are more in line with the way you think then you better vote yeah. because what they will do is 
overturn Roe versus Wade. It's happening right now. All, and, and they had an in because everyone was so pissed and they hated Hillary. And, you know, Trump gets in and they get the. I, at some point, I think they had the whole thing. I don't remember the House, the Senate, and the presidency. But if that happens again now, with the, they're emboldened to make these choices um, because people are so angry. And it's crazy to me that that we're talking right now about not having access to birth control. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, an abortion in February. Um, I got pregnant in February and I literally like could not figure out what I wanted to do. I want another child more than fucking anything. And I made that choice to have an abortion and I, it didn't work correctly. And so I had to have a second abortion. I was in the hospital. Um, I had to have kind of like an emergency procedure. Mm-hmm. And if I, if they took that away, if I needed to have that second procedure, it would be definitionally illegal for me to have it. Like, and I could have died from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. So like, it's great, but this is so serious what they're doing. In Oklahoma right now, they did a total ban, 100% ban on abortion for any reason. And the thing that I have issue with too, is that these people that are like, we're so anti-abortion, we're anti-birth control. So you can't have birth control to stop it in the first place. Yeah. You can't abort it when when you get pregnant and we won't take care of you if you, if we force you to have a child. Then if you have a child, we're just gonna put this child in uh uh the system right. and nobody age is gonna sit there and get yeah. old and rot and you know some of these kids some kids uh some kids have good upbringings, but some kids just end up really miserable. Yeah. And that's like and there are so many children in this world that need to you know be adopted as is like can you imagine the strain on the system if you're forcing people to have children i just i can't even imagine that world and i hope that we never have to but i'm afraid that we might unfortunately yeah we're so, we're really uh, heading toward that and it's gonna be very detrimental you know it will be and we have to you know do something about it and people are just like so aloof or they just don't care enough or um they just don't think it's going to happen or whatever the reason may be that they don't get motivated to be involved in these things like um it's really unfortunate because this is going to be a big deal Uh, all these midterm elections coming up it's going to be a huge deal so we will see. Yeah, November is going to be very important. Very important. And I feel that it's crazy. I feel it's crazy that like they keep trying to change the borderlines um, to keep certain people in office. Right. Yeah. Oh, gerrymandering. Well, and that's like it's the the whole thing. Politics has exploded into like a really interesting realm. Um, and now you have no faith in the systems because you have people that are questioning and trying to undermine the electoral process, um, which is very dangerous. That's a fascist technique that they do. Um, you try to inspire fear in people and therefore you can um, harness that emotion and that's a vote, that's a, that's a tactic. Uh, fear and anger are the most easy emotions to appeal to. So if you can make people afraid and make them angry, then you have their support. Um, and that's, you know, if you can target a population of people to, to blame for things, if you can, um, you give people that mm-hmm. or outlet. One, or one person across and reflects and blame something else than what the problem actually is. Right, right. And we don't look at the systemic problems, but we'll blame something else and get you all riled up about it. And um, you don't even really see what's happening behind the scenes. It's detrimental. So 
I don't know. We're going through it's a tough time right now. This is a great conversation though, by the way. I really <laughs> love them. <laughs> I didn't know where this was gonna go. I was like, this is gonna be this. This is perfect. This is great. Just have a little tent on tent on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> no, I, I love this conversation. I have some stuff I wanted to, to hit on. I haven't even hit on it yet because it's everything else we've been talking okay. about. <laughs> so uh do you have any upcoming things you want your uh your fans to look out for? So we have um there's a lot coming out. I have um Ivan and I have the podcast Two Russians One America and it's two Russians One Podcast.com. Um we have the YouTube channel coming up soon. It was supposed to launch today, but we just have like so many like things going on that it just keeps getting pushed back. But there are episodes up now, like short little clips. Um and we're, we're putting out full like 10 minute episodes starting next week. Um so that's youtube.com slash two Russians one America. I have a personal channel on YouTube. It's at ww Misha Montana world.com will link to my YouTube that's launching as well. I actually have um, on that one, w- there's a, a video interview that I did that is going to be revealing something secret about my stroke that I never told the public. Um, and it's kind of going to be like a shocking tabloid type thing and that's why I never mentioned it in the first place because I didn't want this information to uh, I don't know if it would be negatively impacting the story but I think it'd be distracting it's going to be distracting that's why I sat on it for over a year now I've never like there's Mm -hmm. three people in this whole world that knew about it for a year um, so to keep a secret like that for that long is kind of like daunting, you know. Um, yeah. And I wanted it to come out on my terms, and I didn't want it to, to like leak out in other ways. And I kind of got to a point where I'm like, I need to put this out there because I don't want it to come out from not me, you know. Yeah. So that's coming out, and I think that's going to be pretty interesting and impactful. And we'll see what kind of chaos that causes in, in the media. But it's like that channel is more of a personal channel like that has the stuff where I talk about you know um a lot of things that people probably didn't know you know I I had an abortion I talk about that um and it's more of like my personal life kind of stuff that's more dramatic where two Russians one America is is the dumpster fire that you you know that people love um it's like me and Evelyn and Ivan and all of our friends and people and just the weird funny crazy stuff we do so it's very lighthearted. um it's super entertaining we have the craziest we have the craziest life um and what's normal to us is people are just like fascinated by it. they're like i can't be- i will never have a day like yours um which is really cool in its own sense but i forget i get so immune to it because it's my life i'm like oh yeah that's probably not normal at all but it's very normal <laughs> to us. and uh yeah that's great the youtubes are going to be great um I was actually on Soft White Underbelly. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, yeah, I watched Soft White Underbelly. Yeah, I, I've been trying to get on Soft White Underbelly for a year. And I finally like just aggressively pursued Mark Rada and started commenting on the videos on Instagram. Because I'm like, I, I, want, I think I would be great on this. I love it, you know. And he messaged me back and he called me and two days later I was on the show. So I just did that a couple of days ago. So stay tuned for that. That comes out in like two weeks. Um, and then, so there's a lot of, st- I mean, we're always doing like such cool stuff. I've got a lot of stroke things coming up that I'm working on. I have my doodle book that I'm doing and putting out for um, stroke, uh, the American Stroke Foundation. It'll, uh, the proceeds from um, the book will go to the American Stroke Foundation um there's a lot we've got tattoo conventions coming up it's the season and now that we finally wrapped award season for the most part for a couple months then um we're working on ink motel 4 we just shot this crazy all-girl orgy for ink motel 4 with seven people it was amazing um it's really cool and so that's ink motel 4 is going to be wild something to stay tuned for um my wrestling because i wrestle and xpw i'm a part of the promotion i don't wrestle yet um i'm training but i 
I'm in the show and they have a show on June 25th called Beautiful Disaster in Pomona, California at the Derby Room. And that's going to be, that's my favorite thing to do. The wrestling stuff is my favorite. So I love it so much. It's just the craziest thing I've ever seen, like ever, because it's deathmatch wrestling, which is way different than uh, normal wrestling. So it's cool. Like I've never seen anything like it. And I'm so happy to be a part of that promotion. So there's a lot. There's a lot I have going on. So, I mean, you can follow Twitter, the Misha Montana, and Instagram, the Misha Montana, to see all the cool stuff that I have going on because there's a lot, a lot coming up. It's going to be great. Anybody yeah, heard all that? So, check this out. Y'all might hear the same outro twice. <laughs> uh, Probably. Maybe not. Uh, just because we, we're going to split this up into two episodes. Okay. Uh, because uh you've heard how awesome her this entire conversation was as you know we used we usually do an hour episode but this this was such so much fun she is a very she is a very interesting and fun person and like she didn't hear this but like when her phone had died for a second uh we me and cw just had a little conversation about that whole conversation was great. I'm like, yeah, I know we went over and I just didn't want to stop. <laughs> no, I know. And that's what, I love that. That's so fun. great. Though. That's, wonderful. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. I'm so happy. It was great. Oh, that's great. So like, wonderful. everybody, please make sure you go um, check her out. She just hit our social medias. Um, make sure you go check her out and uh, give her a follow. Buy, buy the stuff that she's directing, the stuff that she's starring yeah. in and everything like that because, you know, your support counts as far as everything and she knows what more she should put out there and everything and, it, you know, it makes it makes her smile knowing that she makes you happy and knowing that you went out and um, purchased her content. Yeah, um, really quick, really, really quick, CW, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me in, <laughs> in the in the in the van down by the river. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, 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 you can find me at CC Fitness LA on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, CC, CC Fitness LA doc. and CC Fitness on Facebook. If you still use that, uh, you can find us at the Burbank Misfits on Instagram, Burbank Misfits on um. Facebook and on the Twitter that says oh at burgermanfits.com that says everything that we do for fitness exercise like fitness photography anything and all other fun crap that we do out here in this crazy world of ours. You want to find me? I am Ross R R A W S E A R R on um Twitter and on um Instagram. Thanks again, um Miss Montana for coming on. You are very fantastic. And yeah, everybody will see you next week. I have no idea um, who our guest will be just yet, but uh, just because I don't know if this person can keep the schedule that we have for our next interview, and they told me that our race week might be scheduled. I don't know our next guest, but please make sure you uh, listen to both episodes, and we will see y'all next time. <laughs>